Well, I'll just indulge you with just the last paragraph of my entry journal from those days in Kandahar also. Uh, yeah, I'm coughing uncontrollably from hitting up on a pair of hashis who go with my Afghani friends. Yeah. <laughs> Stumble back to the Peace Hotel <clears throat> of Peace Ali. <sighs> yeah. And enter my room. What's in the room? A single twine far, uh, fiber bed and a stand up hookah. Every room. Uh, oh, here comes the uh, Afghan room boy, <laughs> barefoot, like a genie. Okay, I order uh, green tea, pistachio nuts, and uh, hashish cookies. Yeah, they're on the menu. They're printed there. Yeah. Well, Eddie recalls his excitement. Uh, my spirit leaps when uh, my passport is stamped in the Amritsar airport. Oh, I feel snug and safe again in good old India, where foreign agents are not allowed to operate. Mm -hmm. And I'm just lost in hundreds of millions of other people. Well, uh, how do you get from Amritsar to go? And he's so huge. Uh, uh, well, through the Indian train system. Remember, uh, Eddie, Eddie utilized this system on his first trip to India two years ago, uh, in 1964, uh, when he often traveled in third-class carriage uh, without a ticket. I mean, those days, uh, if you were a Zadu or didn't have any money, just not going to throw you off the train. Well, if he did buy a ticket, Amritsar to Delhi, just to get going, that would have been 14 rupees. <laughs> yeah, about a dollar and a half. Well, in Delhi, you get to Delhi, there's two freak things. There's one in downtown New Delhi uh, around a big roundabout called Korn, uh, uh, Konat Circus. Uh, and why are people in the park there? Why are the freaks there? Because it's you just walk across the street to the general post office and uh, hopefully get some money. You know, we're talking no credit cards, no telephones. Morris code. Pack out some coded message to your people to help you. The embassies will do nothing. The horror stories about that. Early wake-up call. Nation-state system? Fake family. Don't rely on them. I mean, just to break for a moment. Uh, you know, an American just died in an Egyptian prison like yesterday. Government. He didn't know do anything. He just was visiting his relatives, got swept off and with 1,700 other people. And, you know, uh, five years in jail, no no charges. Uh, yeah. Well, at nighttime, you're in New Delhi. Uh, your, your money hasn't come, so you smoke some hashish and uh, maybe shoot some heroin with your other friends in the park. I made love there. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, the other thing, like the, the, sheen, uh, the scene shifted to the Crown Hotel in Old Delhi. Yeah, you take one of these uh, motorcycle taxis past the Red Fort, just gorgeous you know, Islamic architecture. Huh? The Red Fort, get to Chandi Chak. And this was frenetic Indian uh, energy to the maximum. Yeah, and uh, just to walk into the hotel uh, near the Old Delhi train station. Well, from the balcony, uh, I'm looking down. I remember the intensity, and the, they're just celebrating so wildly. Uh, this Indian wedding procession weaving its way in and out of the narrow alleyway just below uh, my my room, and uh, aggressive monkeys everywhere in the Crown Hotel neighborhood, you know, merciless stealing. Everything. 
that was vulnerable from fruit to like slabs of hashish. Don't leave that lying around. <laughs> well, uh, congratulations, uh, uh, viewers and uh, readers of my book that we've now halfway through. So it might be time to like talk about Eddie's first trip to go. Yeah. 1966, he's 42. Yeah. Well, uh, Delhi to go, uh, direct train to Bombay. She buys with a ticket, it was like uh, four bucks, 1,400 kilometers. And 27 hours later, <laughs> oh, you got out of Victoria Station in Bombay.